assalamu alaikum my name is sara and today what we are going to study we are going to study about the trends in product table yes we have discussed in previous video that there are eight groups and seven periods in mendeleev product table so today we will discuss about the group 1 and group 7 trends let's discuss about the group 1 elements okay group 1 elements is also called alkali metals okay if you observe that lithium sodium potassium rubidium these all are the metals but hydrogen is a non metal yes hydrogen is non metal but why we have placed this hydrogen in group 1 okay let me tell you group 1 element contains the number of electrons in the outermost shell okay in the previous video we have discussed that how to make the electronic structure of elements and we know that all the group 1 elements contain one electron in the outermost shell here i want to tell you about the valence electrons valence electrons are the those electrons present in the outermost shell okay so the electrons present in the outermost shell are called valence electron and if you observe that all the group 1 element like this is the electronic structure of lithium sodium and potassium right they all contains one valence electron is it clear okay so why we have placed hydrogen in group 1 because it also contain only one element sorry one electron in the outermost shell basically it contain one valence electron that is the only reason that we have placed hydrogen in the group 1 otherwise it is non metal okay ji so uh, if we want to talk about the trends in the group 1 elements we know that that down the group when we are moving downwards lithium then sodium then potassium we know that that in product table the elements are arranged in an increasing order of their atomic number and as well as atomic mass so lithium has atomic number 3 sodium has atomic number 11 and potassium has atomic number 19 you don't have to memorize it okay so lithium has atomic number 3 so we can see the three electrons so this electron is a valence electron because this is present in the outermost shell and we can write down like in first shell we have two and the second shell contain one electron so 2812881 8, and if someone give you this number and ask that uh, this is the unknown element please tell me in which group it belongs you can surely say uh, group 1 because it last shell contain only one electron okay ji so when we are moving downwards okay we know that atomic number increases so if atomic number increases atomic mass will also be increases what about atomic radius atomic radius means if you observe that in lithium we have two shells in sodium we have three shells in uh, in potassium we have four shells so number of shells also increases so the distance between the nucleus and the outermost shell also increases so this is the radius so yes atomic radius also increases what about the reactivity reactivity also increases when we are moving downwards what is the reason the reason is that nucleus and the outermost shell right so the force of attraction between the nucleus and the outermost shell become decreases because now we have a more atomic radius let's discuss about the reactivity in group 1 elements when we are moving downwards the reactivity also increases it mean potassium is more reactive as compared to sodium and lithium okay now let's talk about the reason what's the reason that why potassium is more reactive as compared to lithium if you observe that between the nucleus and the valence shell this is called valence shell this is called the valence electron right there is only a one shell just imagine shell as a barrier if you observe sodium that between the nucleus and between the valence shell there are now two more shells two more barriers so as the valence electrons are far away 
from the nucleus as we are moving downwards so the force of attraction between the nucleus and the valence electron will be less so when the force of attraction will be less so they it will be easier to lose electron because we know that metals always tend to lose electron right metals lose electron and whenever they lose electron they will have a positive charge so when we are moving downwards it's and there are more barriers between the nucleus and the valence shell so the valence shell can easily be lost how because now the force of attraction between the nucleus and the uh, valence shell will be less so it will be easily lose electron so as we are moving downwards the reactivity increases and when the reactivity increases melting point boiling point decreases because we know that that in reactivity and melting point boiling point they are inversely proportional to each other now let's talk about group 7 elements group 7 elements are also called halogens and group 7 means that all the elements uh, belong to the group 7 they contain seven valence electrons means they have seven electrons in the outermost shell okay so fluorine chlorine bromine like these are the elements of group 7 and if you observe the electronic structure all of them contain seven valence electron and as we are moving downward you can see this that the number of shell increases okay so mean uh, fluorine belongs to group 2 because we have two shells Chlor chlorine belongs to third shell and the bromine uh, belongs to fourth shell okay so if you talk about the trends atomic number increases yes atomic mass increases yes atomic radius also increases you can see this atomic radius increases and then about the reactivity reactivity in group 7 decreases why because group 7 elements are non metals they already have seven electrons in their outermost shell right that are called valence electrons so for stability they need only one electrons so they will tend to gain electron and whenever an element will gain electron it will have a negative charge for example if you observe the chlorine chlorine will have a negative charge fluorine will have a negative charge okay ji so okay now the question is why the reactivity decreases down the group okay nucleus is the boss nucleus is the boss its nuclear responsibility to gain an electron for example from sodium or potassium right so if fluorine has to take an electron from the sodium and potassium the nucleus will Uh, gain an electron so you can see that between the nucleus and the there are only two sh sh take shells at barriers there are only two shell but if you observe the chlorine you can see there are three shells so it's very difficult for the nucleus as compare if we compare chlorine to fluorine it's very difficult for the chlorine nucleus to cross the three shells to cr uh, cross three barriers and then take an electron from the sodium or maybe uh, potassium right and when we talk about the bromine it's very very difficult for the nucleus to cross the four barriers and then take electron is it clear that's why the reactivity decreases in group 7 elements and when the fluorine reacts with the potassium we will have will will we will have a potassium fluoride uh, sodium fluoride then potassium chloride then the sodium cl chloride so that's why group 7 elements are called halogens because whenever they react with metals they form the salt and we know that whenever uh, reactivity and melting point boiling point has inverse relationship so if the reactivity is decreasing melting point boiling point increasing